Five foam rolling myths that may surprise you or possibly injure you. Hi friends, welcome to Happy at Home. If you're new here, I'm Angie Happy Lou, and I love foam rolling for so many reasons, like loosening tight and sore muscles as a warm up and cool down after workouts, preventing injury, and so much more. But it's not as simple to do as many may think. Also, I see a lot of people making mistakes that can cause injury or believing hype that just isn't fully supported. In this video, I'm gonna bust some misconceptions so you can start to properly enjoy the benefits of this great form of therapy and exercise. Myth number one, more pain, more gain. Yes, foam rolling can be quite painful, but knowing when enough is enough is crucial to preventing further injury or inflammation. Rolling directly on an area of tightness or pain is also not the answer in many instances. This is probably the most common mistake that people make when it comes to foam rolling. Just because say your IT bands are super tight or your lower back is tight, you should not roll directly on these areas. These areas can be super sensitive and adding too much pressure on them by rolling directly on them can cause further injury and pain. I have a great five minute routine that you can do for some of the most common aches and pains we experience, especially if you're over 35 right here. So be sure to check that out. Anatomically, you wanna roll the surrounding areas that are causing muscle tightness and pulling on these particular areas, therefore causing tension and possible pain. For instance, if you have lateral tightness in your knee after running, hiking, or even cycling, try rolling out your gluteus medius, quads, and calves. Technique is also super important here. I generally like to supervise my clients and get them to properly engage their core to support their lower back when rolling out any of these areas. Being able to hold your weight up can also pose a challenge, so knowing modifications at different levels of foam rolling is also super important. With all of this in mind, let's move on to the next myth that can also cause more pain and possible injury if not taken seriously. Myth number two, the longer the better. So how long should you be rolling for and knowing when to back off, as I mentioned before, are both key factors to being able to enjoy the benefits of foam rolling long term instead of further injuring yourself. Rolling for longer in one session does not necessarily mean you will have better, quicker results. Instead, you wanna aim for short, properly targeted and supported sessions, preferably daily or as needed. Okay, so once you're in the correct position with the targeted surrounding areas of tension identified, core engaged, you wanna slowly roll for about 20 to 30 seconds in that particular area. I also cue my clients that when you feel a hot spot, like an obvious spot that is more tense than others, stop for a second, start really focusing on your breath and move even slower. Don't push beyond what you can bear. Stop for a second, switch sides, and come back to it again. It's normal for one side to sometimes feel tighter than the other. Again, slow and controlled, core engaged, breathing through it for no more than 20 to 30 seconds. If you notice a tension moving into the shoulders or uncontrollable grimacing, take a break. Myth number three, one size fits all. Not every foam roller or technique is suitable for everyone. The right approach depends on individual needs, preferences, and specific conditions. As I mentioned before, rolling harder and faster does not mean better and rolling on foam rollers that are too hard or textured can cause injury and make pain worse. Knowing what type of foam roller you should be using as there are a myriad of choices out there is so important as the wrong roller could do more harm than good. Harder and fancier does not necessarily mean better. If you don't even know why you're purchasing a rigid foam roller with tapered ends in the first place, you probably should not be using it. When choosing a foam roller, consider your pain tolerance, experience level, specific needs, and desired intensity of massage. If you're new to foam rolling, starting with a softer roller and then progressing to a denser one as you become more accustomed can be a good approach. I've linked my favorite roller from Balance Body that I use on myself and clients in the description below. Myth number four, it can target fat loss and eliminate cellulite. This is another misconception. Foam rolling on its own cannot target fat loss or eliminate cellulite, friends. If done regularly on targeted areas of concern, like your thighs or buttocks, let's say, you may temporarily improve the appearance of cellulite if you can strengthen the fascia underneath. But that again is a big if. The keyword here is strengthen as the building of the muscle through exercises like Pilates can have a longer lasting effect 
on the appearance of cellulite. But can it help you lose weight if done regularly? Only if you're using the foam roller as an apparatus for strength training. There are countless Pilates exercises that can be done on the foam roller that have multiple benefits of tension relief as well as working your core and upper and lower body all at the same time. Stay tuned for a Pilates foam roller workout of your dreams coming up. Myth number five, it's only for athletes or very active people. Wrong! While many athletes and active individuals regularly use and benefit from foam rolling, people who experience tension from everyday activities like sitting for too long at a desk on a computer or driving, carrying heavy objects and children can all benefit from a foam rolling practice, again, if done properly. However, there are individuals that should avoid foam rolling and seek professional medical advice before starting, like people with osteoporosis, deep vein thrombosis, recent acute injuries, post-surgery and cancer patients, those with certain skin conditions, varicose veins, blood disorders, pregnant, and if you have a hernia. I would honestly advise anyone wanting to start foam rolling to do their research first if starting a self-care practice and be sure to be following along any tutorials from experienced professionals or seek the advice and direction from a licensed physical therapist before starting, especially if you have any injuries or prolonged pain that you are dealing with. If you're looking to start so that you can help alleviate tightness or just add into your routines to prevent tightness like I do pre and post workout, again, please take the time to understand how important it is to properly roll surrounding areas of concern, what type of roller you're using, not rolling on any particular area for too long, and managing your expectations as to what this practice can do for you. Expect feel-good massage vibes with immediate tension relief, long-term enjoyment of everyday exercises if done regularly, but not as a magic tool that will alter your genetically predisposed fibrous tethers that appear as cellulite and make it just disappear. Thanks so much for watching, and if you have any comments or questions, please comment below, and I'll see you on the next one.